Good evening. Today we're going to be looking at Chapter 2, Section 4, which is multiplying rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are numbers like fractions and decimals. So first, let's begin on notebook page 26. Open up to notebook 26. If you have fractions, you're going to multiply across, just so straight across. So first, we're going to multiply the numerators together. So in this case, 2 times 4 would give us 8. And then we're going to multiply our denominators together. That's the bottom number. 3 times 7 equals 21. We'd always want to reduce or simplify. So in this case, is there any number that goes into 8? Well, we can divide 8 by 2, but we cannot divide 21 by 2. We can divide 21 by 3, but we can't divide 8 by 3. So there's no numbers that we can reduce this by, so that's going to be our simplified answer there. 8 over 21. In the decimal problems, we'll do some later. The decimals do not have to line up in the problem. We're just going to count how many decimal spaces we have, and that's how many decimals are going to be in our answer. So here's some practice here. What is 2 fifths times 3 fourths? So multiplying straight across, you're going to have an answer of 6 over 20. Do you think we can reduce 6 over 20? I bet we can. 6 over 20, we can divide 6 by 2. And we can divide 20 by 2. Remember, whatever you reduce the top by, you also have to reduce the bottom. So 6 divided by 2 is an answer of 3. And 20 divided by 2 is an answer of 10. So that's as good as we can reduce there. So our answer would be 3 over 10, or 3 tenths. 1 times 4 would be 4. And 3 times 11 would be 33. There's nothing that we can reduce that by. 4 is divisible by 2, but 33 is not. 33 is divisible by 3, but 4 is not. So that's as good as we're going to be able to do there. We can multiply straight across here. 2 times 1 would be 2, and 12 times 1 would be 12. Then we can actually divide those both by 2, and we'll get an answer of 1 over 6, or 1 sixth. So that would be our answer there. Remember, make sure you're circling or highlighting your answers. Now what happens when you have a mixed number here? That's a large number, a whole number, plus a fraction. The first thing we need to do is change that into an improper fraction. So an improper fraction. So if you have 4 times 3, it gives an answer of 12 plus 1 would be 13 over 3. And we're still going to do multiplication here times 2 over 5. So 13 times 2 is 26. And 3 times 5 is 15. You figure out how many times is 15 going to 26. Well, that goes in once. So we need to reduce it now. And 25 minus 15 gives us an answer of 11. So I have 1 and 11 fifteenths. If you had one that was negative, it certainly worked through. Like, imagine this 2 fifths had been negative. That would have been negative, and so we'd have a negative answer here. So if 1 is negative, your answer is going to be negative. Make sure you're watching that negative sign. Now, what about when you're multiplying decimals? So how about 2.1 times 1.3? We're going to line that up just like a normal multiplication problem. So 2.1 and then 1.3. In this case, the decimals happen to line up. They don't have to. I'm going to say 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Put in that 0 placeholder. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. Go to add up our answer. And that would give us 2, 7, 3. And we count. In this one, there are 1, 2 decimal places in the multiplication problem. So we need 2 decimal places in our answer. So our answer is going to be 2.73. 2.73. You'll have 4.52 times... 1.1. You'll see that my decimal places do not line up here. That's okay. It's only in addition and subtraction do you need your decimals to line up. Not in multiplication or division. They do not have to line up. People often make that mistake. We'll go through and do some multiplication here. 1 times 2 would be 2. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 4 is 4. Put in our 0 placeholder. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. And 1 times 4 is 4. I'm going to add those together and get 2, 7, 9, and 4. In this case, we have 1, 2, 
three decimal spots. So we need one, two, three decimal spots in our answer. So our final answer is 4.972. Make sure you're matching up those decimal spots. One final problem you might see tonight is one where a fraction and a decimal are mixed. So in this case, you need to change them to whatever you think is going to be easier. Because that 0.471, I, I don't know what fraction that works out easily to be. I think it might be easier to change these to decimals. So two-fifths, uh, I don't know what that's going to be as a fraction. So what I'm going to do is divide 2 divided by 5. I'm going to work it out here. 5 goes into 2 0 times. 0 times 5 is 0. I'm going to subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2. I'm going to bring down that 0. 5 goes into 20 4 times. 4 times 5 is 20. And I can subtract and I get a 0 answer there. So it turns out, oh, it's 0. 0.4. So I'm going to have 1.4 times 1.471. A little bit of multiplication here. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 7 would be 28, so I'll carry the 2. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 would be 18. Carry the 1. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 would be 5. Now, putting my 0 placeholder there, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 7 is 7, 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 1 is 1. I'm going to add that up and get 4, 9, a 15, and I'll carry the 1. That would be 10, so I'll 0 and carry the 1. You get a 2, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places, so I need 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places. So my answer would be 2.0594 would be my final answer there. On your textbook page 80, you're going to work out numbers 1 through 9, and you're going to answer a couple of those into your answer entry online right below this video. Please make sure you're doing that answer entry. It's really helpful for me in figuring out what I need to go over the next day. I will see you all in class tomorrow. Have a good night.